Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be jumping on a wee trend, which is, is probably past, to be honest. It's probably it's probably gone now, um, by a week or so. But do not have to say to capitalise on it anyway and make a video, because I actually find it quite interesting, and it kind of links in towards this point of the season now. We've got to the point where we're talking about changes at Celtic, we're talking about a potential managerial change, we're looking at a squad overhaul, a lot of things are going to change at Celtic over this summer, and I believe it's a, a team that is in need of restoration, a team that probably needs some changes in their players who we should keep, and there's players that should go. Now, on Twitter, if you're a Twitter user, of course, and if you are, make sure to follow it, Ryan Stephen F., um, you know, there's been this kind of tear meme thrown about. I wouldn't exactly call it a meme, but it's been thrown about for different things, different football teams, including Celtic. You've probably seen it. It's been thrown about for the fucking Avengers by rating the best Avengers to the worst Avengers. Been Game of Thrones, blah blah blah, everything. There's been there's a tear for fucking everything on Twitter if you look for it. And uh, today I'm going to give my opinion on the definitive. Let's say I would say it's the definitive um, Celtic tier system and rating the players from Vital to who we should get rid of. Some vital to sell. There is going to be, I think it's six layers to mine here. Six different tiers and I'm going to put everybody within a certain tier. And it's just my opinions on who Celtic should look at keeping, who they should look at selling um, this summer. Now, as always, people will agree, people will disagree. If you do disagree, go about it in a nice manner. Don't go about it in an aggressive manner. But, um, you know what, I'm used to it at this point. So, go in anyway. I didn't cut there. My mother interrupted, uh, which you may have heard. But, um, aye, basically, that's the system. As I said, you may agree, you may disagree, but we're going to go right in it anyway. I, I believe we should start from the top. It's probably the wisest and easiest place to start, because there's not much explained to do when it comes to the vital players and such. But um, the six layers are this. Vital, important, squad player, future player, sell, and bring back next season, obviously. I'm including everyone in this list. Every player that currently plays for the first team in Celtic, or has had a first team appearance this season, including those on loan. So, that is the system, and let's start from the top. So the top layer is vital. I will display it across the screen. I'm going to run through this one very quickly. There's not much explaining for me to do. We've got Scott Brown, Callum McGregor, Scott Bain, Kieran Tierney, Chrissy Iyer, James Forrest, and Odson Edward. Now, the version I saw on Twitter, um, I can't remember who actually created it. Um, so sorry if, you, if you're watching this video and you had the wee viral tweet of this tier system. Um, credit to you for giving me the idea. But also... Odds on Edward wasn't included in the vital section for me, which I thought was, was quite offensive and, and quite, you know, quite wrong. Um, no offence, but I just feel like Odds on Edward is a vital player. I feel like, especially over the last couple of months, he's been returning from injury. He's been showing that he is a goal scorer. He performs in the big games. We've seen him against Rangers and such. Yes, I think this season has been hit and miss for him at points, especially with the injuries he's been struggling with, but we paid £9 million, um, and we're looking for that return, and this season I don't think has been too bad. It started off quite poorly, but as it's went on, it's got gradually better for Edward, and he has got all the skill and ability in the world when he decides to turn up, and he gives us his best performance. He is miles better than any other striker in the league, and I, I just generally believe that. I believe he is the best striker in Scotland, and um, he's, he's a fantastic player. He should be in the vital. Scott Brown, he's our captain. Enough said. Callum McGregor, player of the year. Absolutely unbelievable, Mr. Consistent. Uh, I think under Lennon he's not looked as great, but still Mr. Consistent. Scott Bain, he's been marvellous, and he's our first team keeper now, so of course he's vital. KT, if I didn't put him in vital, I'd be hung. Uh, Chrissy Iyer, I think he's the best young player at the club. Uh, I think he's outstanding. He's got a lot of development to do, and he's also versatile um, as a trained central midfielder, yet centre-back as well. And James Forrest, who's just had a marvellous season. My opinions of him has been changed wildly over the last couple of years. I believe this is a group of players which really do belong in the vital section. Now, moving on to important, um, and, and this is the smallest category that I've got. I believe Celtic lack quality depth around the field. There's certain positions we have a lot of depth, and as you can see from this important section, we have three central midfielders straight away. And in the section above, we also had Callum McGregor and Scott Brown. Our central midfield is, is packed with talent. In the important players section, you've got Tom Rogic, you've got Jozo Semenovic, Ryan Christie and Avi and Cham. The one to talk about the most is probably Jozo Semenovic, a player who maybe months ago, not too long ago, I would have been saying squad player or sell. And I think under Neil Lennon, he has proved that he has a great set of half. And we've seen that when he originally joined Celtic. He looked great. He looked a unit in that first season with Brendan Rodgers. He looked like a really decent centre half. And then things just didn't go well for him with injury. And he just didn't look as though he would return to the same quality as we once seen him. But now he's looking good. And he's looking like he's playing with a passion again. 
he's grabbed that first team chance and he's running with it. He doesn't want to lose it. And in that short space of time, to me, he's looking like a great centre half. Now, I'm not saying there's better centre halves out there that we can get to replace him, but right now I think he's looking like an important player. The partnership between him and Ayer has been looking decent and uh, there's a lot of development to go on there. I think he is an important player now um, because, number one, we don't have a lot of depth in centre-back, so that's why it makes him important. And number two, I, I just really, on the park, I think his performances has proved that he can be an important player. So he is maybe the controversial one that you don't agree with should be in the important bracket, but for me he is. I love Ian Cham, a player who are also um, moved up from the, the kind of decent squad player level. I think in Cham, when he plays his best, is marvellous. We just don't get it enough. I still firmly believe that John McGinn should have been that player in that position this season, but it didn't happen. So in Cham, you know, when he plays his best, I said he's great. It's just getting that best out of him and getting that fitness out of him. As you see, I'm talking about a lot in this Celtic team, fitness is a big issue. And Cham, though, he's in that important range. The same with Rodjick, fitness-wise. When he plays his best, he's amazing and he would be in the vital section. But he's a player who I think Celtic can afford to lose and replace. But he's still really important. He's not a squad player. He's better than that. Um, Christie, you know, when he's back, will be back in that bracket as well. I've put him there because he's also young. And we've seen a lot of good stuff out of him this season. So for me, that is the important bracket. One. Now, the squad player section. This is perhaps the section where these are the players who we could afford to lose we could replace, but for depth reasons, they're good to keep around the club. Now, I've done a lot of moving about in this section. Um, I, I believe this is firmly our best squad players that we have available at the minute. Now, when you look at it, there are signs there that we need a lot of players this summer. You're looking at Mikel Lustig for me, Johnny Hayes, Emilio Izaguirre, Craig Gordon, Nier Baton, and Lee Griffiths. These are all players who, if left Celtic, I wouldn't be overly concerned, but we'd need to replace. And... Right now, I would definitely just keep them for the sake that we don't have enough players in our squad. Um, Mikael Lustig, he's passed it. He came back into the team over Toljan. And yes, a couple of performances have been actually quite decent. He's not done a lot wrong, but he has passed it. Let's be fucking honest. Um, he's one of the players in the right back position. It's just a position we need someone else. We need someone brought in in that position. We thought Toljan was the answer. It doesn't look like it. But... Um, Lustig, he's a squad player, and you know what, he's been at the club a long time, he deserves to stay, I suppose, for many reasons, but he just can't be a first team player. Johnny Hayes, I think we've seen a lot of great stuff out of him um, over the past few weeks, um, I've been happy to see him get more chances at Celtics, I think a lot of fans discarded him, and didn't really want to give him a chance, he's never going to be a first team week in, week out starter, I don't think, but once again, as a squad player, he's got great use, plays a left back as well now, he's a good player to have around, he's a Geary, by any means I would get rid of. If I could, I would get rid of him, but we don't have enough left-backs, and Tierney has been fucked with that hip. Um, so, you know what, he's been useful for the league games, the European games, let's just not get into his performances, they have been beyond abysmal. But, as a squad player, I think right now we need to keep him unless there's an improvement. Gordon, I still think, is a magnificent goalkeeper, one of the best shot stoppers in the country. Bain has just came in and took his place. I wouldn't get rid of Gordon, yes, he's older. But goalkeepers get better with age. And I know he's he's really older. But I'm a big fan of God though. And I think he's a great backup goalkeeper to have. Um, and he's a goalkeeper who could easily come back into the team if Bain was to hit a rough patch. I love Craig Gordon. Near Baton. Yes, I've got Near Baton in squad player. Why not sell? What has happened to you, Ryan? What has happened to your opinions for the past three years on Near Baton? Well, um, really depth. That's it. I would get rid of Baton. But... Yes, I said the centre mid position is parking, as, as I have mentioned. But it's a guy who's played centre half quite poorly. And he's also one of the only kind of defensive midfielders we've got. I'm just thinking for when maybe Brown gets injured, he's getting older, the legs are kind of leaving him. And we've not really got too many options at this current minute, so that's why I've got him squad player. And finally, Lee Griffiths. Obviously, he's missed the majority of the season. He'll be back, hopefully scoring goals. I think it was hard for me to judge Griffiths because of the whole situation behind him. And also because I don't know what his form is going to be like. So I thought squad player was a respectable position to leave him in. Players for the future. Now, there's not much for me to comment on here because, it, you know, it's, it, it does what it says in the tin. It's players for the future. I've got Ewan Henderson, Daniel Arzani, who's, of course, only on loan. But I believe we will see him next season. I believe that's the loan deal. Uh, Bio, Mikey Johnson, uh, Anthony Ralston, and Abui Kuasi. Maybe the only one here confusing you 
would be Abuya Kuasi. Why have I got him in the future? Why am I not just selling him? Waste of money. I flop. Brendan Rodgers spending three million on absolute shit. That's the that's the thought that's going around your head right now. Isn't it? But I believe Abuya Kuasi has got a lot more to offer. Uh, I think he's struggled. He deserves more time. He's still, I think it's difficult for him fitting in. And we should allow him that opportunity to try and fit in. Maybe give him a loan. He's also struggled with a couple of injuries himself. Um, because there has been times he's been on the park and he's not looked too bad. There was that brief period he got in the team um, a few weeks and it, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't great either. It wasn't good by any means. But he was solid and it looked as though he was getting better from him when we originally saw him come into the Celtic team. And he's still a young guy. You know, he's still in his early 20s. He's still got a big future ahead of him. And we need to get some sort of return on that three million. I think wasting that by just getting rid of him for nowhere near a profit or the same amount of money, obviously, we wouldn't get that back. Um, we should just give him the opportunity and give him the chances, I think, in the future. Maybe a loan is what's needed for him, though. Maybe he needs to find his footing. You know, look what we've done with Chris Iyer. We, we gave him to Kilmarnock for, for, was it six months, a season? Um, and he was remarkable over there. It was great. And we brought him back and he fitted into our team. It was, it was great. It was fantastic. Why not do the same with Kuasi? See if it works. If it doesn't, then, then sell him. But for me, the guy does deserve a bit more of a chance. The rest of them are just still very young and do have a future to sell to him. I'm a big fan of Johnson and Rouse and Henderson. Um, Bio, not seen anything of him yet in the first team, really, apart from those brief five minutes at fucking Kilmarnock. But they're all youngsters. They deserve a future at Celtic. Don't punt them yet. Coming to the last two sections of the, the, the fucking tier system, the sell section. This is the players that I think should leave Celtic Football Club this summer. Now, one straight away, you're going to say it's impossible. We've just triggered his contract. Yes, I made this list before the news was broke. <laughs> but if it was up to me and I was manager, I would be getting rid of Scott Sinclair this summer. For me, Scott Sinclair has given everything Celtic he has to offer. His time is over and there's not much else for him to do. He looks finished. He doesn't look like he's fresh anymore. He's not offering anything unique or special like he was in that first season. I'm still a big fan of Sinclair. Um, I think he is a great guy. I think he's a great footballer. But his time at Celtic is over. And I say that with a great amount of respect. He was a great player um, the first couple of seasons he was here. Top scorer for those two seasons. Um, then you'll know what his first season was just great. It was remarkable. And maybe he can scrape those sort of performances out again but for me it's not worth wasting the wage and I wouldn't have personally triggered that one year contract extension purely because there's money to be saved there. Uh, I know I'm now starting to sound like Peter Lowell. Yes I suppose there's experience, um, he's a good player uh, with a lot of history behind him, uh, well, history's probably you know, just experience, we'll stick to that. Um, but for me his time at Celtic should be coming to an end but we've got one year at him so I guess right now he's back to squad player but if it was up to me I'd be selling him the other players Marvin Comper what the fuck are we doing why is he not gone why have we not just terminated his contract fucking cut your losses sell. get rid of him he fucking turned up to that award ceremony in a brown suit the other night I just said everything get rid of him that Comper not much else to say Tolian I was a fan of when he first joined um, I was very excited as a Dortmund fan as well to see him come to Celtic but he didn't really offer much. Um, and now he's, he's just fell out the team altogether. Lennon's not a fan. There's no point in spending the, the money and a wage or whatever for him. Loan them back from Dortmund in my opinion. So I know it says sell. Technically we can't sell him. We don't own the fucking player. But give him back to Dortmund. I don't see the point going out again. We can find another right back. Gamboa. Another right back. I mean. Sometimes you just feel sorry for the guy. I mean. Free Gamboa was the crying. There has been glimpses of good stuff from him, but his defensive ability is fucking rank, and he needs to go. Talk about defensive ability. Uh, here's someone with none, Jack Hendry. Uh, and I was, I'm sorry, Jack. Um, but he's perhaps the worst player I've ever seen in a Celtic top. I'm not even kidding on when I say it. Uh, it's, it's just honest truth. Get rid of him. Don't even loan him out. He's young, yes, but he's no Celtic quality. He never will be. And maybe I'll bite my words on that. Maybe I'll be playing for Man United one day. But there's also that fucking chance that I'll become Prime Minister. So, no. Jack Hendry away. Kundai Benyu. Yes, another youngster who's never been given a chance at Celtic. But the one time that I did see him at Parkhead, he looked like he had not enough ability. His loans have been to teams who are nowhere near the level of Celtic. And not even in the same league. Uh, so, I think Benyu should just get rid of him as well. He was a player who Brendan Rodgers ultimately brought in. Rodgers is gone. What's the plan for him now? Uh, it's the same with Kroasi, I suppose. 
There's the phone. I, so, I suppose that's the same story with Kuasi, and I'm being a bit more biased, maybe. But I think there was just more talent from Kuasi, and at least he's played in the Celtic team venue. Has to go for me. That is the player Celtic should have been or should be getting rid of this summer. And finally, the bring back section. Get them back here next season. Dedrick Boyata just somehow gave him a contract. We need centre halves, and you know what? As much as I used to fucking give the guy Doug's abuse on here. He's actually a solid centre-back. Um, he's been decent enough this season. Get him back somehow. Probably not going to happen. Bring him back to Celtic Park next season. Please. Philip Benkovic. Not going to happen. Brendan Rodgers in charge of Leicester. Rodgers is obviously a fan. He will have plans for him at Leicester. Not going to come back. But if Rodgers, you might be nice to us, we'll take him. I'd take him. Bring him back home. centre half. We need them. Uh, Oliver Buck. I think uh, a lot of people have been very unfair on Oliver Buck. I honestly thought he was decent. I really liked him. I thought he offered a lot of pace, power, things that we lacked um, going forward. And for playing out of position, I didn't think it was too bad. His first touch and his finishing could do with improvement. But there's time for that. And over a year deal, there's no no problem with having depth there. I would like to see him come back to Celtic. And finally, Timo Weah. I don't need to say anything about Timo Weah. The fans love him. And uh, it would be good to have him back next season. Will we have him back, though? Don't know. But that is my... Celtic tier list. I've kind of rambled through it. I didn't want to make it a fucking hour long. I could talk about every player individually. But if you want to see something similar, there probably will be more similar things coming towards the transfer window when rumours and stuff start flying. So things will come along then. But for this current moment in time, the 2nd of May 2019, this is what I believe of the Celtic squad. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Much appreciated. Let me know your opinions to the list in the comments below. And I, I'll see you next time.